Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the value pi and pi is the value that's equal to 3.141593 and it goes on and on. And we're going to use a different technique than just putting in a formula and getting that number. We're going to say that the area of a, of a circle with radius 1 is equal to pi and why is that? Well, because the area of a circle, which I'm going to let equal a here, is equal to pi times r squared, where r is equal to the radius. And the radius, remember, is a distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. And if we let uh, r equal 1, then the area is just equal to pi. So if the radius of a circle is 1, then the area of that circle is equal to pi. Okay, so how do we find the area of a circle with radius 1? Well, what we're going to do is only look at this upper right quadrant. And we want the area of this, this uh, blue shaded region here. And this is a 90 degree angle here. So these are, this is a radius going uh, from, the, from 0 to 1 on the x-axis. And this is a radius going from 0 to 1 on the y-axis okay so we have uh, a square here of, of length with sides of length 1 it doesn't look like a square because of the way I drew it but it's meant to be a square okay so how can we find the area of this blue shaded region in this square that has sides of length 1 well we can use the formula um, x squared plus the Pythagorean theorem x squared plus y squared is equal to h squared, right? Where h is the hypotenuse of a triangle. So what what I mean is, if this is x, this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis, if we square x and we square y, we get a triangle, right? And here here's, uh, here's our hypotenuse. And we know that... Uh, x squared, if the maximum value of x, uh, if that can be 1, that's that can be 1, right? Because this is radius 1. And the maximum value of y can be 1. So we have, you know, 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to 2. So the length of this hypotenuse is 2. It might not look like that here, but it's supposed to be 2. So what we want to do is we only want to find points you know, we only want to find the area of the circle. So we only want points inside the circle. So we know that if we if we stop the hypotenuse here, it's exactly on the edge. It's going to have a it's going to have a hypotenuse of one, right? So what we can do is go if x squared plus y squared. What we want to do is check is this value less than or equal to one. And if that's the case, if x squared uh, plus y squared is less than or equal to 1, then we know that um, it generated a point that is somewhere in this blue shaded region, right? It could be here. It could be over here. It could be inside. It could be, oops, it could be, it could be in here because this is the hypotenuse, remember? So the point could be anywhere in here, but it's going to be a hypotenuse that ends up within the blue shaded region up to the edge so what we want to do is you know we're using x and y here to find this hypotenuse and we're gonna generate random numbers for x and y and um, we're gonna do a simulation of say a hundred times and we're gonna count um, the times that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to one and we're gonna get if it's less than or equal to one then we're gonna say okay it's in the circle and if it's not in the circle, we're going to keep track of that as well. And at the end of the this simulation, we're going to uh, count the number of, of points that ended up in the circle and divide it by the number of points uh, that we totally generated. So if, if we run the simulation 100 times and, and 70 times um, the point falls in the circle in this blue region, we're going to then uh, get a ratio of the points in the circle of 70 divided by all the points uh, we ever generated which is 100 so we'll get like 0.7 <laughs> and then we're going to multiply that number 
uh, by 4 and we should get the area of the circle because that ratio of points in here versus point outside should give us the area of what's inside okay so let's see how we can do this in Excel okay I'm gonna keep track of um, the number of simulations so this will be a trial that'll be like one two three four five I'm gonna generate a random X value a random Y value and then I'm gonna show you the value X squared plus Y squared so in VBA um, we have some code here and you know I, I declared uh, samples as long as a long variable X and Y as double so these variables X and Y are gonna hold our X value and Y value I then declared a variable to count uh, the number of times we're in the circle and then I declared a variable for our final estimate of pi and then I set the initial value of the count of the the points inside the circle to zero and the number of samples um, samples I mean trials so uh, samples I set that initially to one okay so then I have what I do is I, I want to clear out uh, this range in case I want to run it again so this is just in case I want to run this simulation again I'm going to clear the old values out so clear cells a2 to d6 uh, d60,000 and then I'm going to run my simulation. So here's my simulation. It's a do until loop. And what I'm doing is I'm doing this uh, 10,000 times. So let me start out by doing it 1,000 times. Okay. And I'm going to generate two random numbers. And in VBA, that's real easy. So you just do x is equal to rand and y is equal to rand. And then I'm going to do my Pythagorean theorem calculation. If x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 then that means it's it's in the circle so I'm gonna go count of inside count inside circle is equal to the count inside circle plus 1 I'm just gonna keep adding to this count and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to go into this cell here and put um, I'm gonna put the value of sample so what I'm doing it here is saying um, find the the first cell with that that's empty starting from the bottom of of the worksheet actually the bottom of all the rows so this is saying you know go to the range the bottom of all the rows in column one and go up from it and offset it one row and zero columns and select it and then in that active cell that I just selected put the value of the samples so this is going to put in the value in this trial here and then what I do is just offset the current cell by one column and I'm going to put the X value here and the Y value here uh, when I offset again by the second column and then I put in X squared Y squared in, in the in the next column so I use offset to put in those values and then I end my if and I increase the value of my samples and then at the end of my loop I get my estimate of pi by dividing uh, the count of all the points inside the circle divided by the samples times 4. I times it by 4, remember, because we're only calculating the area of the circle in one fourth of the area, in the upper right quadrant. And then I put a message box that will display the estimate. Okay, so let's step through this. You can see what's going on here. So I'm stepping through. I generate some random numbers and uh, let me go to locals window so I generate a random number so when you use this rand it generates numbers between 0 and 1 randomly just random numbers and then if I square that um, here you can see these values are now being populated because I selected the cell here I put samples in this cell right I have my random number that we just saw in memory here, 0 0.7 and, and 0 0.53 is y. And then I square that. So if I if I now square that and put that value in, in this cell here by offsetting uh, the original cell, I get that number, 0 0.78. So, um, so that is my uh, x squared plus y squared. That's my hypotenuse, right? And that means it's in the circle so now I increase my samples and I'm gonna do that a thousand times so if I press uh, play here you'll see that over here all these numbers are being randomly generated right 
and it stopped at uh, a thousand you know a thousand samples but notice that it didn't go down to a thousand here because I only put in these cells here um, the values that were inside the circle so out of a thousand um, about you know 785 were inside the circle and let's see so it just gave us a, a message box that said pi is 3.1 well, what I want to show you here is that if I insert a chart, a scatter chart, um, let's see, I only want to select I only want to select columns B and see and if I hit enter well what do we have here you, you start to see what's going on here um, I generated random points inside this uh, circle and it, you could see the outline of the circle here these are random points and I simulated these points randomly and I, I summed up the ratio of the points inside this circle to the total number of points I generated, which would fall in a, a, a square of one by one by one by one by one with sides one. So let me do this again, and uh, let me first change this data to go down further because I'm going to generate more points here. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to generate, let me change to 20,000. So now you see that there's a lot of white space in here, but if I go into the code, and I change this to let's say 10,000. So now I'm going to generate 10,000 points, and I'm going to count the number of points that are in the circle versus the number that are not. And that chart we just made is going to show us; it's going to plot every single point that's inside that circle. And this takes a little bit to run, but it's it's probably uh, worth the wait because you'll see that. Before we had some white spots in our circle, whereas now we're going to have less white spots because more and more points are being generated in that circle. And you're going to see that the value of pi is going to be close to that 3.14 number that is the actual value of pi. So you could see that you know the random numbers are, are still coming out. Um, we're on trial 7700, 7800, 7900. And remember, we're only putting the values uh, in Excel that are inside the circle. So we're almost done, and now we're done, and look at that. This is pi. Pi is 3.148. And if we scroll up, if I go to cell, if I just go up here and go to A1, here you can see all that white spot is gone. We have our area inside, us of, inside the square that is a one by one by one by one, and that's pi. Okay, bye.